Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. Guys, welcome back to Season 7 of Potted Together. Hey! Oh, I just got butterflies. Yay. <laughs> um hi. hi. It's been so it's been a while. Uh truth be told, we did just like chat for a while, but you know, that's how we do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We well, we're not gonna mention it, are we? <laughs> <laughs> I, sh- I think we I think we should just go with what our heart is telling us to do. Basically, we added another tier on our Patreon, and we just did a little chat for that. That's all. Yeah. yeah. That's all. <laughs> it's it's just a, a little bonus chat every week, and it's not super long, but it's just a little extra content if you're wanting that, because we are trying to be more structured this season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll see how so that we're goes. Getting the, we're getting the random shit we talk about, stuff we talk about <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> but we're recording it, so yes. if you want to join in our randomness, it's very pop random. culture, uh, all this other stuff. Yeah, we talked yeah. about then, pop culture, gossip, we talked about TV shows, just the typical randomness. Reality TV, yeah. 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 So, but we're still going to chat and in these episodes, it's just, it was maybe a little much, so we're channeling it. <laughs> Hills a little much. We're channeling it somewhere else. So anyway, Adam is leading the episode, so take it away. Oh, take it away. Um, Yeah, today we're just going to kind of do an update. I think that our season premieres are always this kind of way, but it literally has been a break. Like we have taken a break because one of us birthed an entire human. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, And (laughs) while she's not been taking a break from life, we just like kind of checked out of of work yeah. So I thought we'd do a little, uh, just see where we are with our plants, our collection, how we're feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, get a little real. I don't know. Yeah. Not real as in like Instagram, Instagram. reels. <laughs> R-E-A-L. Get a little Instagram <laughs> real content. I'm like, yeah, content, 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 content. <laughs> content. Um, everything is content. Uh, content everything content. is content. <laughs> Um, oh man! Uh, who but, wants to go first? Yeah, I don't. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nicole doesn't care. Okay, I'll go first. So <laughs> it's really hot in uh, Illinois, Illinois, and it's hot in Missouri too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And it is hot in Arizona. <laughs> and it, it is, is hot. always hot. In Arizona. Um, But yeah, so I'm just really happy that I don't have to work outside because all I've been thinking about today is like all the animals and all the like people that don't have homes. Like, are they are they at a cooling center? Are they in water? Are they okay? Because we have a lot of space in my house, so we can like take in all the animals and maybe (laughs) maybe a couple people. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, is it? So it's that hot, huh? Like yeah, that. it's a bit dangerous. It's, it's like breaking records. So I think the last time it was this hot was like the 40s on record. But it's mainly because of the humidity. The humidity mm-hmm. is like over 80 percent. And it's that's like worse than the tropics, like worse than the rainforest. Like you go outside and you physically can't breathe. Like I'm not being dramatic. It's bad. Mm-hmm glasses so, fog up. yeah yeah so yeah i'm just i'm i'm hoping that everybody's staying safe and that you know everybody's okay because it's a doozy but like becca said earlier <clears throat> in our patreon catch up it's gonna like drop into the 70s this weekend which blows my mind because i'm sure we've talked about this before but like 
climate change is so real. I just remember being young and having the seasons and it like the gradual change in temperature. And that's Mm -hmm. what we should be used to. But like this like 115 degree heat index down to 78 is wild. Like, how does that even happen? You know? Yeah, major whiplash. Yeah. So anyway, um, I didn't do anything this summer. Oh, Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, like, what are some main points that that you did during the break? But you have done stuff. You've been hanging out with Brie. You went to Galena. You started yourself on fire. Like all of these things. (laughs) Okay. true, true. True. Uh, that's another thing I'm going to talk about over on Patreon, um, in September was I had a little incident, uh, at work last weekend and Mm -hmm. I'm being a little careful about what I say about it on a public podcast, but I'm okay. Um, it was a little traumatizing. It was a lot traumatizing. And if you want to listen to the full story, head over to Patreon (laughs) (laughs) or don't or DM me and I'll tell you. Um, but (laughs) For legal yes. reasons, Nicole is For having me. to be hush yeah. hush. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I, um, yeah, I did. I did go to like some new plant shops. I hung out with Brie. Well, recently we went to Galena because I think the other times we hung out, I actually talked about it on the podcast or maybe it was Patreon. But we went to Galena a few weeks ago and I absolutely love Galena so much. The weather was perfect it was just so nice and she had never been there so i was like showing her all the things and we decided to do a ghost tour which i didn't tell you guys about this spoopy Mm -mm. i saw the photos you Mm -mm. saw the photos well brie has um she can like you know she has a little bit of this channeling energy okay so she was telling me about this before going on the ghost tour and i was like you let me know if you feel something we are out of there okay (laughs) i i mean we are just gonna book it like i don't care what we paid we don't have to do it and she's like okay so first stop on this ghost tour is a freaking cemetery and i don't know like how much listeners know about galena illinois but it is like one of the oldest if not the oldest town in illinois Mm -hmm. so dating back to like early 1800s okay (laughs) And these these graves are old. Mm. Um, and so the, the tour guide is really sweet. And she whips out this box of equipment to contact the spirits in the cemetery. Mm. And I mean, like very much like electronic, like dowsing rods and uh the the, like frequency machines and right away i was just like i'm kind of not feeling this (laughs) yeah i don't know if we should be so we weren't allowed to go in the cemetery for like all the right reasons like it's that's kind of disrespectful you know but we were outside of the cemetery and people are like super into it and they're like going along the fence and they're doing it and i was (laughs) i took one of the tools and me and brie kind of walked away and i was like i'm kind of not feeling this and she's like yeah i don't i don't think we should be trying to talk to the ghosts you know yeah so we didn't we just like pretended what we were doing it and then we get back on the bus and she's kind of taking us around town telling us the history of some of these buildings and then we stop at this little house that was like a shack and she said it was you know very old 1800s we went inside and as soon as we walked inside (laughs) and it's funny because there were some deer outside so i was recording a video of the deer and you can hear brie in the background being like i don't like it i don't like it i don't like it (laughs) I don't like this one bit. <laughs> she's like, I I was like, oh, you don't feel, you don't like, you don't, you're good. And she's like, no, I'm not good. And I was like, okay, we got to go. And then I started feeling like dizzy and I was like, we need to get out of here. Like, I need to get out of here. So we like stepped yeah. out. We weren't part of this whole ghost what tour. What if they because, like attached themselves to you and like yeah, follow it was, you? It was creepy. I know. I was like, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. When I booked it, I assumed we were gonna, it was going to be like a bus tour. But I thought we, I didn't think we were going to be getting off the bus and like interacting with spirits. I wouldn't have yeah. signed up for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a bit close. It's a bit much. Um, but yeah, it, other than that, like it was it was a really good time. It was a lot of fun. 
she liked Galena. We might go back because it's like halfway point between the both of us. So it's like perfect. Well, we rented this Airbnb that was also a little creepy. <laughs> it was above a uh, shop. And the first thing I told her was I read the reviews. I read the reviews. <laughs> like, it's got great reviews, but it wasn't like it wasn't super clean. It was very old. But it was the right price. It was like under a hundred bucks, and we were like right in the center of town. Um, but it was fun. It was a good time. We had a lot of fun. But that's really the only thing that I did. I didn't really. I didn't go on any vacations or anything this year. Me and Mia went to go tour uh, Michigan, uh, University of Michigan, in Ann Arbor. Mm-hmm. That was kind of cool. I think that was like the furthest I've traveled all summer. Um, really cool school. Have either of you been there? Like to tour it. Yeah. I really like the town. Like the town is very cute. Lots to do. Seems pretty safe. How Um, far of a drive was that from you? It was like four and a half, five hours. Okay. So not like far enough that she couldn't come home for like some weekends. Right. But far enough to be away, you know? Far enough to be away. Yeah. That's a good distance. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I I feel like it is because it's like. I don't know. I, I've I have not gone away to college. I know you guys kind of have, but it's like when you go when you go away to college and you're living on campus, it's like don't you kind of want to be far from your parents? Like don't you want that independence? And I don't know. Yes, I'm. I definitely want her to stay close, but I'm not gonna put that energy out there. You know, whatever she wants to do. Yeah, I feel like it but forces yeah. you to be more independent when you are further away. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I was like 45 minutes from my parents, but I was like, I want to be independent. So I really yeah. didn't visit very often. My mom still mm-hmm. is sad about that. Aww. Your but, sister's really far. Yeah. My sister's like six hours and she still comes home on weekends, you know, like certain. Oh, that's not that bad. I forget yeah. that it's Arizona, California. Yeah. That's not that bad. Yeah. I feel like that's yeah. a good distance. But Adam, how far were you from your hometown? Oh, it was like a two hour drive, okay. like an oh. hour and a half, two hour drive it's like I, for my freshman year. I went home every single weekend. Did you? Because I was just the shy introvert that didn't know how to make friends or scared to. So like, yeah, mm-hmm. I was at school just to do schoolwork. I didn't really have a social life. And then I went home every weekend, mm-hmm. which is common if you live close. I mean, yeah, because that's your comfort. Mm-hmm. That is your comfort. But I think, yeah, going out of state or multiple hours away is like the, the true college experience for sure. Because you can't just like any second hop in a car and go home. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But that's all I did really this summer. Couple, couple little things here and there. But it's been busy. It's a busy wedding season. So I can't really yeah, do much. This is your busy, your busy time of year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What about you guys? Um, yeah, Becca, do you want to go? Yeah, I, yeah, there's not much. So this will be quick. <laughs> <laughs> Just got the parasite hanging around. Yeah. Latching on. Sustaining the baby. She's, the parasite is still in the home. So <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. Nora is great. She is such a good baby. She, it really is. Yeah. I really, I don't want to sound, I don't want to make anybody feel like bad about their situation um but she's been really easy honestly and Mm -hmm. very chill baby just one of those babies that just kind of like sits there and she like wants to eat a lot which she's an infant so that makes sense (laughs) same i mean yeah i mean i i got an appetite too but yeah like postpartum has been really easy in terms of taking care of her uh, it's been a lot harder in terms of taking care of me, which mm-hmm. I've talked on Instagram a little bit, but like I'm dealing with some postpartum anxiety and depression. Mm-hmm. I uh, recently started taking Zoloft and it's just something that like so many women have messaged me about and said that like not enough people talk about. And yeah. I just, I feel very open about it because it's like, I, I mean, I, d- I dealt with these two things before, but now it's like in the different brand. Now it's the postpartum kind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I kind of expected it, but also it kind of surprised me too. So it's yeah. been interesting, but I do feel like it's almost like I kind of forgot about how low I felt 
now that I'm on this medication because it has made me feel so much better. That's but good. Yeah, I'm on week two. So I think this is like the euphoria week. Like you feel like really good and then it'll mm. balance out. So that's what I've heard. But everybody reacts differently. But yeah, I mean, it was just at my six week appointment, I didn't feel like I was feeling anything too bad. And then by like eight weeks, it hit me pretty tough. Mm-hmm. And it was just hard. I was just noticing like I didn't want to go out anymore. I didn't want to shower, you know, all these things that I was like, I want to take care of myself and like be active and whatever. I just didn't want to anymore. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and when you have like, you know, the sleep deprivation and everything else, new life transitions, it's a lot harder to use your typical coping mechanisms. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying something new this time and we'll see how it goes. But I do feel a lot better and like more positive and good. Yeah. Yeah. Less spiraling. Yeah. Less spiraling. I, yeah, I was, she's sleeping for a little bit longer periods of time. So it's like four or five hours at a time now at, at night. And it's just like mm-hmm. amazing. Like I feel, I think that also helps. But yeah. Um, yeah, I was, I was just having a hard time falling asleep because I got like, quote unquote, a full night's rest in like four mm-hmm. hours. <laughs> Because it was wow. so much more than what I was used to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Everybody is like, oh, newborn sleep so much better than pregnancy sleep. And I'm like, no, absolutely not. That is not true. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I lost like four weeks of the the third trimester. So actually, I, it might have... I might have gotten to the point where newborn sleep would have felt way better than pregnancy yeah. sleep. But I was still sleeping pretty good for the most part. So... Mm-hmm. Anyway, yeah, it's been it's been an adjustment to say the least. Like really, it it has been hard, but she's so worth it and she's so beautiful and just the sweetest cuddliest baby and she's growing yeah. up. She's just getting yeah. bigger yeah. and bigger and it's really She is. I feel like every time I see a picture it's like, wow, she's gotten so much bigger like yeah. every single one. Like even if it's just a week apart, it's just wild how quickly they grow. Mm-hmm. I know. She's 10 pounds. 10 pounds of baby. 10 so. pounds of baby. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, she's just so cute. <laughs> she's, she's so she cute. She is cute. And, yeah. Each day she looks like me or she looks like Daniel. And, like, I think she's just, like, a perfect combination of both of us. And, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I still don't know if I'm ever going to show her face online. But, like, in some videos, like, her profile is showing or, you know, like, Mm -hmm. little glimpses like, that might happen as she gets a little older, but um, I might be a little bit less rigid about it, but for now, I'm still like, nah, I've gone this long without showing her, like, I don't really feel like I need to. Yeah. Yeah. But I've always said, like, I'm not gonna, like, I don't know, make sure she's not home if I'm filming, so if she happens to be seen, okay, but... Yeah, I don't know. I'm still like navigating all of that. It's like a weird like mama bear thing. It is because it it's not only like, well, yeah, ultimately it is about you protecting your kids. But like the internet's such a weird place, you yeah. know, like uh, sometimes my mind spirals and I think like, should I go back and delete all the videos I've done with my kids and just or private them and save them for myself, you know, because mm-hmm. it is it's just like a weird thing. Plus her being this age she can't really consent to being online so it's like that's a whole other layer you know so yeah i get Mm -hmm. it i totally get it yeah yeah i had that was one of the things that i was spiraling about the most like in the beginning was Mm -hmm. and not that anybody made me feel like this but postpartum emotions are wild but Mm -hmm. i was just like people are gonna feel entitled to see her like they're gonna think that they like deserve to see her and like no one deserves to see her like it was just like (laughs) over the top and like I would be like weeping to Daniel and he's like it's really not that like it's okay like yeah it's you know he was doing his best but I was like (laughs) Like, (laughs) weeping over the the thought of somebody thinking that they like deserved to see a photo of her like oh god I was really going through it (laughs) that's wild you know know, Uh, like thinking about that to the way of like 
I know it's not the same, but like the royal family when they have babies and they're expected to like come out the yeah. day, the next day oh my and like do photos in front of all of the press. Yes, no. how awful and I'm just is like, that? I can't imagine how they feel. It's horrible. But then you know, I guess at some point you just have to just shut that down because it's like, well, I'm, but that's just weird, you know, to think about. I never really thought about that. Yeah. Like in the documentary where Megan's like, I just didn't, I wanted to be... I wanted to be with my baby. I didn't want to put on this show for the press, you know, Mm -hmm. and she put them heels on. She did it anyway. But I'm like, I don't know. Like, you probably couldn't get me to do that shit. That's why I would never be a part of the royal family. But (laughs) yeah, that's the only reason. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) the only reason. reason I take all the money. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So it has been definitely a, a roller coaster to say the least and i mm-hmm. i do plan on making a, like a fourth trimester video but that's i mean that's all i've been up to honestly like i've been going to like some mom things like events and stuff trying to make friends um but that's really that's been my life yeah yeah well i just want to say that i am proud of you for putting yourself first well maybe not first but like recognizing and being like look we need to go fi- we need something needs to help because like i can't mm-hmm. do this on my own so mm-hmm. yep kudos yep. to you thank 100%. you yeah um yeah i don't think sorry are you done i'm sorry yeah you, what's your you've been sh- you've been all over the place uh, have i well kelly you're <laughs> kelly okay, well, you're a cali goer now <laughs> yeah. Well, it took a birthday trip to San Francisco in June. Like that was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I got invited out to the DC plant swap by my friend Ryan, which yes. was also really fun. He invited me out to like, just kind of give a, uh, he did this really beautiful presentation on like my journey with plants, my YouTube, so the podcast, cool. this one included. Yeah. And there were so many people there that were just like, I love the podcast, which is still so wild to me. But like Janice was there. Hi, Janice, if you're listening. Hi. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it was really fun. Uh, yeah. So I went to D.C. for that. Um, D.C., what a great city. I, yeah. I know a lot of I've the times been. we like associated with like politics and stuff Mm. but it is such a nice pedestrian city like Mm. you could move there and never need a vehicle that's like i was hopping on city bikes that were riding them for like four or five miles Mm -hmm. and they were like a dollar 70 i was like what yeah that's like hopping on scooters like they were just everywhere it was just so accessible so um and lots of great food so it was a cool place Mm. yeah how fun yeah. it, good times and then yeah just and then hopped over to la for another birthday trip so like what were you in california for this last time what were you out there for uh jesse my friend jesse who's from the let's talk Hawaii podcast mm-hmm. it was her birth it, her birthday was last okay. weekend okay okay so okay. it was kind of like a little birthday trip um cool. we did some fun things saw a lot of taylor swift stuff you i told yes. myself i wasn't gonna talk about taylor swift oh, but why did you tell yourself that because <laughs> i think people get annoyed they're like when did, they, when did this become a taylor swift fan podcast <laughs> well you got me more oh. so you know it's yeah. not true <laughs> <laughs> okay but i, I, I like know, her but not, not like you guys yeah yeah um, you know, and the thing is, I wasn't like that until like this year. Like something has come over me. Me neither. Like, I, I mean, I've been always been a, in the blood of Taylor. Yeah, it's same. Oh it's it's God. the social media. It's the social media exposure that we've had, you oh, know. And gosh. But you know, then I so the conspiracy theory of me sits here and thinks like, has this all been planned? Like where they're think tanks out there and data collected that be like, this is how we can really get like the entire world like because i feel like there's been a lot of people like me who was like yeah she was cool but like i'm not obsessed but i'm teetering there like i Mm. it's it's getting a little too close for my comfort okay well i gotta ask you why am i like this let me just ask you one quick question like would you have shown up to what's his face's wedding like the other crazy people in the street okay i wouldn't have either that was wild that's a that was wild like borderline strange behavior that is strange behavior so many people there were so many people yeah i was just like i couldn't imagine living that life either that's why if i'm ever rich and famous i want to be like 
R.L. Stein, rich and famous, because you know that yeah. man has a lot of money. Yeah, I but love I could R. L. sit Stein. next to his ass in a restaurant, and I would not even know yes. Yes. that I was sitting next to R.L. Stein. Authors, yep. like they really do have have it all. Yes, yeah. yes, hundred percent. Yeah, like I'm trying to think of who are the other ones. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Authors, yeah. that's the kind of rich I want to be. Yeah, but yeah. then I don't want to do that work because I don't like writing. So. <laughs> Oh, hire a ghost we writer. If you have else. enough money, yeah. just hire a ghost writer. <gasps> Britney Spears' autobiography coming out in October. Okay, but did she really write it? Okay, now we're, we're, think... we're venturing back into the, <laughs> the yeah, Patreon okay. podcast okay. thing we were we'll, talking about. We'll take about. a step back. <laughs> um, but yeah, so uh, the California trips were fun. I did go to a Korean day spa, which was a v- new experience. Ooh, saw that. It was fun until, like, you got sectioned off into, like, the male-female-only sections. Oh. Mm-hmm. Then it was a bit predatory. But oh. such is the gay community when you're around saunas mm. and bathing suits are prohibited. So that was a little... Ooh. What? <laughs> you had to be naked in there? Oh, yeah. <gasps> but, but, like There were signs everywhere that was, like, no bathing suits allowed. Why oh. is that, though? I have well, heard because, about... Like, in Korea, these things are normal. And it, like going to a day spa is like a bathhouse, like a shower mm-hmm. kind of thing. Like people do it. Sometimes they don't even have, sh- like Lydia said, sometimes people don't even have showers in their homes. Like they just go to these things after work, relax. But there is like a co-ed section that you have like an outfit that you have to wear. I'll talk more about it in our Patreon episode. Okay. But okay. yeah. I want to hear the about separate, it. The separate male, female areas prohibited you could wear a towel or like your shorts but like you couldn't go into the hot tub with anything on you had to be naked oh my gosh so you're Mm -hmm. just walking around cupping it like my god well you can't because you're gonna you just gotta let it you just gotta let it hang yeah because then you'd look weak like these are men i put a towel around myself a little preview i put a towel around myself but the towel was so tiny it felt like i was wearing a hand towel and it wouldn't even latch so like my confidence was already low because i'm like well i can't even i have to hold this i have to hold both ends in a fist and i'm like am i that fat that i can't oh stop <laughs> and then, anyway my whole thigh was exposed while wearing the towel <laughs> not the thigh like it was and not the thigh not the thigh uh, but then, i mean adam yeah. like if you were to go to korea like i think you might stick out a little bit like <laughs> yeah, possibly. you're a little tall <laughs> like maybe uh, the towels weren't made for western true. size men i don't yeah. know <laughs> Uh, but that was yeah that was an experience oh i bet it was but it was fun it was fun um but then i got to go to unsolicited plant talks which is april mall's house greenhouses hoya haven i just oh, love that place wow. so very cool fun so yeah that's a good transition into our chat today which is now the plant section look look at us even at before us. 30 minutes look at I us i mean and we i'm gonna it. shave a little bit of it down so we're probably around 25 minutes folks who would have thought who Let's is structured this season us <laughs> it's us okay gear patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub 500 dollars dive watch full stop Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com. The mistletoe margarita, the Scrooge driver, the North Pole punch. The holidays call for cocktails, so get everything you'll need for them delivered with Drizzly, the go-to app for drink delivery. So what's it gonna be? Classics like Bullet Bourbon, Don Julio Reposado, or Kettle One, or maybe something new. Find it all on Drizzly where you can get beer, wine, and spirits delivered for any holiday festivity. Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y dot com today. Must be 21 plus, not available in all locations. Okay, so let's get down to brass tacks and talk about our plants, Mm -hmm. where we're at after the summer, like how we're feeling, um, the good, the bad, whatever. Yeah. 
I don't know who wants to who wants to start. You like, pick. What's... Oh, I just burped. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, let's go with you, Nicole. You know, what's your relationship? What's your plan? Only because you posted your shelves and you admitted they were a little. A little, a little skinny, sparse. A little sparse. And you were wanting to go shopping. Yeah. Well, okay. So let me start with my plants that I have outside. I think, Oh, the cactus. Yeah, the cactus. I, Guys, I think, dare I say it, this might be the last year I bring my plants outside. Really? Because, well, okay, so I don't know if it's this... Uh, this summer, I haven't had like the best relationship with my plants over the past few months. I've just kind of been neglecting them for reasons I can't even say. Like, I don't know genuinely why I'm not into them right now. I'm just not. But like even outside, and it could it could be that I'm working a lot because I am working a lot. I think I have like 10 weddings in August, like my other shooters working weddings too. Mm -hmm. So it's, and then I'm editing all day during the week, you know? Yeah. So I so have another person shooting the weddings, but do you still do all the editing? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I just haven't been outside a lot lately, you know, like July was an okay month, but like August has been, poof. But the my cactus outside, like last summer and the year before that, I was very into them. Like I'd literally water them every other day. I'd be pulling the cobwebs off of them. We'd be rearranging. I went out there yesterday to look at them. <laughs> and my mom's like, do you want me to soak your cactus? Because they haven't gotten water in like five days. And I was like, shit. Like I'm forgetting about them, you know? Mm -hmm. And I'm, no, I'm looking at them and I'm like, okay, I'm going to take another photo maybe this week because I took a photo when I first brought them out, but I don't, I'm not noticing a lot of new growth. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm thinking like the work it takes to bring them out and to bring them in because I do like to repot if I feel it's necessary or like use diatomaceous earth or whatever. It's just a lot of work and I don't know if I want to do it next year. I may mm -hmm. change my mind, but that's where I'm at right now. There, the spiders are setting up shop. You guys, like there are on the cactus. <laughs> on the ca they are just going from cactus to cactus, living their best life, and I just don't even care. I'm just like, hey, it's yours. Take it. You know, like do your thing, <laughs> chicken wing. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I'm I'm kind of like thinking about when I want to bring them back in, and that's another reason why my shelves might be a little sparse because I do still have a lot of cactus outside. Um, but I posted, I posted that photo <laughs> on Instagram because we were getting our basement stairs redone. So we tore the carpet up because it was just the owners before us had dogs. And I think that they, it's just a little smelly. So we ripped the carpet up and we got somebody to come out and like lay vinyl flooring for us. And that was the day before that happened because I was thinking, I was like, they're going to have to do some sanding. Dust is going to get everywhere. So I moved all of my plants like to another room <laughs> and I took a photo of empty shelves. The amount of DMs I got, people were like, are you moving again? What happened? Where all, did you sell them all? And I was like, wow, you guys are very invested in these empty shelves. Like, can I just be cleaning? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but um. Yeah, I think I scared Adam because he he was like, what is happening? And I was like, well, I left Jay and I got into a big fight with my mom. And and I was like, I'm going to go stay at Taylor Swift's New York house. <laughs> she said, I could come stay yeah, with she her. She had my heart racing until she said <laughs> I contacted Taylor and she's letting me stay at her oh, house in New York. And God. I was like, oh, OK. <laughs> but like she was like, Jay and I uh, are separating. <gasps> I'm not talking to my mom. I'm so upset with her. Yeah. And like my heart, you know, when you like start reading something, like I felt it beating. Oh. And I was like, oh, God. no, I'm sorry. And then she said the Taylor Swift line. I was like, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mia's like, you should have kept it going. I was like, I can't do that. Um, <laughs> not the relationship. Not the relationship. Yeah, not the relationship. Too invested. But uh, yeah, so, so my, yeah, my shelves are a little, they're a little scarce. And I kind of got like, once I cleaned them off and put my stuff back, I was like, oh. 
I have a lot of space on these on these shelves. Like even when I bring my cactus in, I'm going to have quite a bit of space. So I was like, maybe going plant shopping will like spark some joy. Um, Mm -hmm. But I never went. So I think I have plans with a friend to go to a plant shop in the coming weeks. I think next week we actually planned it. So we'll see. We'll see if I cop something from the plant Mm. shop next week. But uh, yeah, so that's that's that. I don't know. Like it could be fun. Like I have not to like pull focus, but I have gotten a pilea peperomioides because oh. I think we were chatting about this like towards the end of last season. I was like, you know, maybe I should try that again. Cause like I, a lot of the plants like that, I kind of just, and now like kind of went to all Hoya. Yeah. But I'm loving watching this pilea grow. Okay. I, have, I put it in pond, you know? So I'm like, okay, well yeah. maybe pond. Cause I didn't have it in pond before, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of fun. To like go back to like, that was my first ever wish list point, you know? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I remember when that thing was so popular. I I had one literally up until the day I cleaned my shelves. It just like fell over and I was like, "Mm." I probably could have saved it, but I just didn't care to. You know, it's Um, okay. But yeah. So I was going to ask you that. That's a good segue because I was going to ask you. I'm like, I noticed like most of your collection is Hoya. So like, how are you feeling about philodendron and like, and I know you still have a few, but like, do you miss having such a like wide variety of plant species or are you content with your Hoya? I am content with my Hoya, but what I'm struggling with now is that I have these big aeroids that I don't know what to do with. Mm -hmm. And it's not like... (laughs) Yeah, that's where I'm struggling because like my Thai constellation, I do love it, but it is literally taking up the entire window and we're, we're at a point now where it can't grow anymore. And if it does, like I have to make a decision, but then I don't want to cut it up because then it'll get weird, you know? Yeah. We, we talked about this before. I think, I feel like, I feel like we've been at that point. And then I want to sell, and I wouldn't mind selling it, but then there's also this like, point of pride with that plant in particular because like that was one of my first import that was my first import plant ever i did a youtube video on it and i still have it along with my white wizard yeah but like i'm kind of feeling over those Mm -hmm. but then i don't want to just like give them away to someone because i want to make sure that whoever takes it is going to to put the same amount of love and care into it Mm -hmm. and so it's like then you really need someone with like a little skin in the game Right. But then I don't know what to do there because that feels a little greedy. Like I bought that Thai constellation for thirty five dollars and I've put four wow. years of effort in five years of effort into it. But you've uh, put a lot of value into the plant, though. Like, yeah, yeah. it's a, and a lot of money on investment moment. Yeah. A lot of time and a lot of money because, hey, mm-hmm. you've fertilized, you've repotted, you've up potted a lot of time. Yeah. Water. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I just like I my relationship with aeroids like is not I don't know. I still love them. It's just like I would rather use that space for like different types of Hoya that I want to grow now, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you. Oh, sorry. I was going to say like the botanical the Phoenix Botanical Garden. Like, do you think maybe they would. OK. Accept like a donation, but then I think, are they going to monitor it or is somebody going to like prop lift? That's my concern. Yeah. Maybe you Well, can Phoenix it. doesn't really have that space, but Tucson does, which I want to go visit the Tucson Botanical Garden again. So maybe we should Beautiful. do that, guys. Yeah. I we have contacts link there. link up. Um, Ooh, because, look at her. you know, I when we went that first time, I loved it. But then I also think back to our episode with Rose. Uh, Mm -hmm. where she said that she worked at a botanical garden and that they wouldn't expect accept anything other than like actual species which the Thai constellation is a cultivar of the monstera but it was I don't know if that's considered a species and I it would love to see it in a botanical garden and like growing up and huge but like I don't know if they would accept it don't they have a Thai there though I don't think so I don't remember seeing a Thai it was a lot of orchids yeah okay where did we go that we saw a big tie in a pot outside of a restaurant? Well, that's not part of the conservatory. That part was then. in St. Louis, St. but Louis. that was an elbow. That was an elbow. That and an they elbow. were guarding that plant. 
Yeah. yeah. Like they saw us looking at it and they had a staff person like literally <laughs> standing next to the pot watching us. And we're like, we're yeah. not going to take a cutting. We're just and that, looking. Yeah. Get it. And that was it. <laughs> we're just trying to get these ticks off of us. Okay. I know. We'll yeah. sit down and get these ticks. Um, but like, that's another thing is my elbow. Like, yeah. I love it. It has history like heart shaped leaves. Rachel sent me a cutting. It did nothing for a year and now it's this giant, beautiful plant. Mm -hmm. But like, I don't really want it anymore because I don't love the way that they grow. If you're, if you're not like sticking on top of like making sure it's like perfect and like, you know, Mm -hmm. straight. Yeah. It's not like, I don't know. And that seems dumb because it's like we're bringing nature into our homes. But I just the aesthetic of aeroids is not my thing. Unless you're like Sydney plant guy or Jake, the plant guy who grow these beautiful yes. aeroids on these poles that are yes. just like perfectly aligned. Um, and mm-hmm. mine just aren't doing that, you know. So, yeah. yeah. but I also don't know what to do about that. So it's like I'm I'm taking care of them out of obligation. But I don't know if that necessarily is the best thing. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I can't ship either of those things, you know, like right. I can't offer that for sale to ship. Cause like how? No. Yeah. It would be scary for sure. Yeah. And I feel and why like, does it feel like giving away the tie or selling the tie would be like giving a little piece of me away. I don't know why I'm struggling with that, but because, because I do it, love it, but I was like, eh, I don't know. Well, because of, because of the time you got them, who you got them from, like, that all holds sediment. Like the, the the Thai constellation was such a popular plant, you know, at the time that we got that. Well, I just recently got one and I love mine so much. But um, <laughs> at the time that you got it, you know, and like all the care you put into it, like, of course, it's going to feel that way, you yeah. know. But yeah. also you're right for not wanting to just give it to just anyone. I feel like someone who spends a little bit more money on a plant is going to care a little bit more for said plant. That's just my opinion. I don't know. Um, yeah, because mm-hmm. you're invested in it, you know? Yeah. yeah. It's like the rehoming fee with pets. <laughs> like, yeah. Do, yeah. A, do a rehoming fee. Like, just to... Yes. I don't know. I've heard people say like just to make sure that somebody has some skin in the game or like they at least have the money to come up with a rehoming fee or something. I don't know all about mm-hmm. the ethics of all of this, but I've this is just what I've seen a lot of people do. Yeah. With pets. Well Yeah. And then I think like future goals would be to have some sort of like plant shop, some brick and mortar space. Yeah. But also supplementing with like the online sales for Hoya that I do with the green plant. And yeah. I was like, Oh, well, that'd be really beautiful in like a shop. So then mm-hmm. I kind of hold on to it because I'm like, oh, you know, like as a it decor could go piece. in a shop. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. then I'm also like, it's freaking huge. So like it takes up a good footprint. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Humble well, brag. let me give you some encouragement <laughs> on that front. But this is what I, this is what I tell my friends, my, my, my plant <laughs> friends online. It's not the only Thai constellation to ever exist. Like. Yeah. Just because this one is that big does not mean that you can't get another one in a few years and it'll get that big again. Like, yeah, that's true. true. It's not the only one to ever exist. So, yeah. I mean, you can replicate the experience. But true. in that same in that same thought, you did only spend thirty five dollars on that plant, and it's freaking huge. It yeah, it's gorge. But. It's huge. You could probably spend like 50 now and still get a pretty good size one, you know? Yeah. With the market. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I wouldn't want you to hold on. It's it's like holding on to craft supplies because you might use it in some you eventual. Might use it later. Like years down the line, you might need this hot glue stick. So you hold on to it and it's like, oh. Just... Girl, you're. Your motto, though, has stuck with me ever since you said it. If I can replace it for under $10 in 10 minutes, mm-hmm. it's out of here. And I literally, like, every time I'm cleaning something out, I'm like, nope, nope. Like, I can just go pick that up. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, yeah, we're, and you know, we're, where, you know where I'm kind of feeling like I should probably rehome it or get rid of it is that when I, like, took it to the shower to water... And kind of like left it in there for a while because you leave it in there to like drain. And then I like to saturate it a little and then come back with some fertilizer, you know, Mm -hmm. 
so the fertilizer absorbs into like whatever. But when I walked out into the living room and it wasn't there blocking the window, I was like, oh, this feels so much more open. Mm-hmm. Like it was like this like feeling of like, oh, I this feels nice. Like I can see out the window. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, well, if I'm feeling that way, then maybe I should follow that instinct and like maybe figure out where those should go. Yeah. Can you... And maybe we've talked about this before. I feel like we have. But can you put it in the guest bedroom with like a Soltech light? Like do yeah, a, I mean, I do a De La Plants move, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You could. I mean, but it's like going to take work because it's going to keep growing. And you're going to have to find right. some yeah. way to bind it up. and Right. Right. Oof. Yeah. It is, it is gorgeous, though. But it's just like, you know, I don't know. We'll figure it out. Have you found yourself excited to like get your hands on a new Hoya species? Okay, because I was in a plant shop the other day and I saw, wait, when was this? Why didn't I buy a plant? Oh, I was dropping off stickers for (laughs) Mia to sell. That's right. It was a shop I was already in, but she had a few Hoyas that I hadn't heard of. And like a part of me wanted to take photos of it and send them to you and be like, look at this new species. And I'm probably like, he probably has like five of them. Like, what are you doing, Nicole? <laughs> no, you should have. But um, um, Yeah, I am excited, but I don't like I don't keep a wish list and I'm not constantly looking. OK, but I've never been that way. Yeah. Uh, but because I would never stop like that would be an obsession of like. Mm-hmm. You remember how we all were when we started with plants, you know, we were always yeah. in the big box stores. We were looking for new things all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have had this desire to like try to to do more difficult things like the thin leaf Toya, the ones that have different types of blooms, because I want to like see these like variations in blooms. Mm hmm. I've been more geared towards the blooms now than the foliage, which was weird because mm. when I was first starting with Hoyas, it was like all foliage, you know, because mm-hmm. I always I mean, there's even videos where I was like, oh, I'm never going to see blooms. So like I always just go off the foliage. Yeah. yeah. And now I'm like, OK, well, let me look at these blooms and let me let me let me try to like figure out how I can make this bloom. Mm-hmm. So it's like a different challenge, you know? Yeah. I feel like you're now a true Hoya collector because I remember when I first got into like Hoya lore it was like you look up a photo of a Hoya and it's only of the flowers and I was like oh okay yeah. but like it's never gonna flower so I don't care <laughs> yeah <laughs> I know yeah that's how I was yeah. uh so yeah I think that's like where my goal like where I've kind of shifted is like plus like I'll uh, you know it's also difficult having a shop because you don't want to get rid of anything like if yeah. something's not bringing you joy you're like well that's you know Someone out there would like that. Right, right. Uh, But, you know, I went really deep in the Lacanosas. That's no surprise. And now I'm kind of like not over Lacanosa, but I'm like. "Mm, They're so pretty. I don't don't need an entire, you know, four foot wide, three shelves full of Lacanosa, you know. Yeah. But then I don't know if I could pare it down. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Side note, one piece of equipment that we have to buy this year is a new chair for Becca. (laughs) I'm trying so hard not to move that much, but I'm feeling so wiggly and it's like... (laughs) <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna get right on that you're gonna get yourself a new chair for that butt talks i mean no it's okay i can as long as you're not pregnant not... anymore get your ass on the floor all right <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay but then, like i started sitting in a desk and i'm like wow this is what people do like this is way more comfortable than sitting on the floor oh my god yeah yeah <laughs> but i mean paint. as long as you're as long as you're not talking while it's squeaking it's fine because i could easily cut it out but yeah. Yeah. I just thought I just thought to notate that. Okay. Um, okay. I'm happy to buy a new chair on Potted Together's dime. I mean, okay, good, good. It's the <laughs> first it. piece of equipment we're getting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, are you done, Adam? About your like? You, how or did yeah, you want to talk I about think anything? Because I, I kind of well, just no. like interviewed you there, which was weird. No, but anyway, that's fine. <laughs> okay. um, I did a little rearranging with some plants because, you know, our goal in the front room is to have a tiki bar eventually. I don't know if we talked about that in season yes, six. Yes, we did. Or maybe so on I've Patreon. Actually, like, cleared, but I've cleared spaces for that to begin. Ooh. Um, so that felt good to like kind of declutter an area that was like all plants. And yeah, so. But also 
Hoya surrounding a tiki bar. Like, it's oh my fucking God. perfect. Like, come on. I know. It's going to be perfect. Oh. And Steve, Steve's like wanting to get some Dracaena, some like yeah. to give it more tropical vibes, and they they, they can yeah. take a little less light, you know, some of the taller Dracaenas. So. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> those can be his plants that he has to take I care know. of. Yeah, exactly. There you go, little chores. Cool. So I don't know when you know what will come of all of that, but you know, still have lots of Hoya. Mm-hmm. I have gotten like the waterings down, so like it's a little tough in the summer because everything's drying out a lot quicker. But mm-hmm. yeah, Ugh. yeah, feeling good about it. Yeah. All right. What about you, Becca? How's your How's your plant collection doing since Little Miss Nora joined? Is she helping you with the chores? Are we getting her on the payroll? Yeah. What's, she, what's yeah. the deal? Is she earning her keep? Yeah, she, she earned- <laughs> she's on payroll. You guys, no. Um, I basically do plant chores while wearing her. So like baby wearing has been the move for me. Just strap her on and run around and do things. So Mm -hmm. I've got a couple carriers that I really love. If anybody is interested, I love the Solly baby wrap. It's like super. I think she likes that one the most. It's like very Mm -hmm. soft and like it's a soft wrap. So it's like really stretchy fabric. And then I have the wild bird aerial carrier which is like the dupe quote unquote dupe for the arty pop i don't know if you guys are in like baby carrier lore but the arty pop is like nope. <laughs> five or six hundred dollars it's like insane wow. expensive and the aerial carrier it was it wasn't like super cheap but it was not five hundred dollars um wow. so those are the two that i use the most and it's really really great um so i, I just yeah strap her on and do my chores at this point i am just mainly watering like i'm just sustaining things um and i have thought to myself a couple of times what if i just hired somebody to water my plants for me like just mm-hmm. for a, a little while um yeah. which then makes me think like do i have too many which yes of course i have too many but at the same time like this is my job to have my I'm like so torn, you know, because if I was um, not in my current job, I probably would have pared down a lot more because Mm -hmm. it is a lot. And I have lost like maybe five plants since she was born, which it really is not that much considering that I had like 130. And considering that you like went into surprise labor unprepared. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually pretty impressive, if you yeah. ask me. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, very. I I am pretty proud. And, I mean, some of them do look a little bit worse for wear, I'll admit. But they are doing pretty well for the most part. And I think that's really the plants that I've chosen. Like, I don't have wild, mm-hmm. like, wildly needy plants. And those plants that are like that are in a contained environment where... It, they stay moist for a bit longer because it's so humid in there. I'm talking about my anthurium specifically. Like, all of my mm-hmm. anthurium look amazing. Like, they have not even been affected by this. It's as if they had no idea that I had a baby <laughs> and <laughs> had neglected them. Yeah, like, who's that? <laughs> but Nora loves looking into the cabinet. Like, it's the cutest she thing. She does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's so cute. She so loves sweet. the cabinet. And I think it's just because of the lights. Like, I'm not thinking that she, like, loves plants, but... She loves looking into the cabinet and she loves the plant room. And like whenever we go in there, she like is instantly like calmed. Like, yeah, if she's like upset and like Daniel's like trying to make her feel better, like he'll walk in there and she usually will stop crying. And oh, I'm um, going to say it's the plants. Oh, yeah. I think it has she's something feel in the nature, you know? Yeah. For sure. I think it has something to do with like, like somebody told me that if your baby is like, inconsolably crying like take them outside and they usually like just stop obviously Mm -hmm. not for every baby but like that helps and I think that my plant room is basically a being outside with how full it is so maybe it's like a similar like feel it's like much brighter in there Um, but yeah so we hang out in there and uh, yeah again I'm basically just sustaining things so I'm watering and I mean, if I did hire someone to water, like, 
I just feel like that'd be weird because like I'm there and I would be watching them do it and like I'm like yeah you're feeding uh, my child you're doing that wrong okay yeah it's Uh, just sir you gonna water that a little bit better (laughs) yeah I just feel like it's weird but at the same time I'm like oh all my videos I'm just watering my plants but you know what that's what I'm doing right now like that's that's the season you're in you know yeah Yeah. and people have been super cool about it I mean I unfortunately and this was like hard on me but like I didn't really get to take a maternity leave because this was unexpected when she came and I didn't really have any content prepared and like most people living in (laughs) the day of our lord 2024 in America (laughs) uh, I don't have paid maternity leave I'm also self-employed though so that's a big reason why but yeah you know I can't afford to take weeks and weeks and weeks off from working so I've had to sort of find a way to keep filming and taking care of my plants which in a way has given me a little bit of purpose but it has also really stressed me out I'll be honest I've been like pretty stressed um, about keeping content up and everything which really the reason that my plants are being taken care of is because I need content and so yeah take that as you will i mean yeah Yeah. (laughs) if it wasn't for my youtube channel i think there would be a lot more dead plants in this house just because it's hard to take care of something else a plant when you're taking care of a baby and then somehow also taking care of yourself in your house it's like yeah i really didn't it is a lot yeah i I honestly and you can look back at my videos like i i knew that i was being naive i knew it but at the same time like i really didn't feel like much would change but Mm -hmm. i was thinking about the later baby stages i wasn't thinking about newborn you know not only that though i feel i think we underestimate just how much our bodies go through when we give birth and Mm -hmm. how much of a change it can it can have on our mental state Mm-hmm. And that just one thing can set things into a little bit of a spiral, you know? Yes. But also, um, can I address the elephant in the room? Uh, has Nora been to the greenhouse oh. yet? <laughs> it's like not safe for her to be in there because oh, it's so no. hot. Oh, but- I'm sure it's like 200 degrees in there now. Yeah. Okay. Let Daniel and I both agreed we hate the greenhouse. It is the bane of our existence. Like we hate it. We wish we never started. It's just so. Oh. Uh, it's just not fun anymore. Like it's been like a year and a half, and it's still not done. And it's just not yeah. fun. You know, like. Uh, and I just I just don't know how much it would cost to like just hire someone to finish it. There's like it's like a bunch of little things, but like they're time consuming and it's annoying. And yeah. Like I want to abandon it, but that would be so stupid. But at the same time, I'm like, fuck, I hate this greenhouse so much. Hire and somebody. The hate, just and the hate. Hire. Yes. Yeah. Because the hate behind it is the work that it's you doing it by yourself like it's that's not an easy task Mm -hmm. and you were pregnant you know yeah so i agree i say hire someone if you're able to um and ask piece by piece piece by piece and ask for help because i'm not that far i don't know how much i could do but like yeah fall's coming up i have a little bit of time so i'm just putting it out there again but i i do get it though like when when something is just like lingering a project just lingers and yeah you feel like you have to finish it because you started it and yeah it's on your channel like it i can understand how that could be very annoying yeah it's not like a sewing project that i'm just gonna abandon like this is i built I built a a house essentially. Yeah. Um it's big. It's really big and I have so many regrets. <laughs> I did not need to make it that big. I would have been done by now for sure. <laughs> like But Becca, it's so it's so beautiful though, Becca. Oh, uh, it is. It is. So, I took her out there because we had like my family came out, you know, when she was born and um I wanted to show my parents like what I was doing up until I gave birth. <laughs> Literally <laughs> hours. <laughs> hours before, yes. Um yeah, and yeah, it it's just little things and it's just a 
annoying things like technical things like installing the heating installing the ventilation it's just like uh i want to throw money at it but when you don't have money to throw at it it's like yeah. what what can you do like let me open a credit card for de la plants like i almost might just because it's like yeah yeah so n- b- not to get i'm like a little too open about it but honestly it's like this isn't real like don't take on this huge project and then get pregnant <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should have waited. Like I, I don't know. I should have, could have, would have. Like it's, it's fine. But we are over yeah. it. That's a Taylor Swift song, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Taylor Swift song. It's a great one. Should have said kidding. no. Should have gone home. Should have thought <laughs> twice before I built a fucking greenhouse. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! So if uh, now I don't want I don't want to operate in the shoulda coulda woulda, but if you sh- would have like, would you have rather just bought a pre built one and just like been like, let's lay the pad, slap a pre built one on here? I should have never. Yes. Yeah. Three thousand <laughs> percent. I should have done that. I I get it, but also at the same time, like this this is gonna be around for a while. And yeah. um, one day you're going to look back and be very proud of yourself. Yeah. I'm proud of you for it. Thank and you. Even though the little things are done. like yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, maybe price it out. It's, you can get free quotes to be like, hey, how much is it going to cost? Although I know you haven't had the best of luck, but I feel like the one guy that you had out for the electricity was a D-bag. Was so a like, yeah, he- Luke. So that's the greenhouse. And I, I do really hope that by fall it can be done. But here's the best update of them all. Okay, mm. fiber internet is coming to my area. No. <gasps> yep. Do we have a date yet? Do we have a date? Well, have I not told you guys this at all? Yes, I You've have. You told us okay. that it's coming. Yeah. Yeah, you said it's coming to the area. You got on a list. You prepaid. And then I was like, "Oh, we can maybe do live stream stuff again." Yes, yes. we can. But- Absolutely. I think it's happening. Like, yeah, without giving too many details, it is happening. I okay. I'm very excited. Um. And we were thinking like, oh, are we going to have to like retrofit something in our house because our house is not made for this? Like we're like, oh, shoot. So I don't know, maybe another month or two, but probably before winter, fingers crossed. Oh, Oh my gosh. So that's going to make my life like a whole new human. I literally will sit here with a Web page for like a minute while it loads. And that is just my normal. Like I. I don't know what other other forms of internet are like, you know. That's taking me oh. back to junior high and looking up naughty sites on the computer, <laughs> just like one line at a time is loading on the picture. Yeah. And I was just, thinking, like, forget about video. We just had pictures, folks. All right, <laughs> three and a half floppy A discs with pictures. All right. Oh my god. I was thinking of LimeWire and like <laughs> downloading all the songs illegally, oh. and it, like it just taking forever. Yeah, um, that's what we're okay. Well, with. that is that is really fun, especially since we're considering possibly doing another live stream party ish thing once we hit 200 Patreon patrons. Mm-hmm. So that would be mm-hmm. fun. That would be fun. Not that yes. we had many technical difficulties last time, which was impressive. Yeah, on our part, but I do wonder so. if my video was fuzzy the whole time. There's just like so many things. Like I'll try yeah, to do Zoom yeah. stuff with like my patrons, and like my Zoom is cutting out the whole time, and I'm like, this is horrible. Um, yeah. But okay, so yeah, as far as the plants, my anthurium seeds sprouted, and I have probably like 15 or 20, which is crazy. Crazy. Yeah, I think uh, I have like six. Yeah, that's so cool. I'm. Yeah. I don't know how many are gonna make it to the next stage. Like. I've, sorry, my chair. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe half will, but they they look really healthy, so they all could potentially. Which I'm. Oh, a little, that's exciting. I'm a little nervous yeah, about. Be doing some giveaways. Um, yeah. yeah. And like, I should, probably should have sold some of the seeds. Like, I just honestly didn't think that I would get that many, and then if that they would work, I didn't like either. I felt so sketchy by like selling seeds because you can't guarantee that they're going to sprout. But I guess that's the risk, right? Like, yeah, but though these were some fertile myrtles, like I, know. I can't believe that I was able to successfully 
sprout anthurium seeds like i'm shook yeah and i'm about to rub some more flowers together so oh get um, rubbing i know my clarinervium brown cow (laughs) my clarinervium (laughs) is ready and i think probably by tomorrow she'll be like pretty ready to receive and you know this feels so weird and then my (laughs) clair uh crystallina magnificum cross is has pollen right now so i'm probably just going to be able to rub the flowers together i don't even have to do anything oh, artificial no Dang. one's ready to disperse and one's ready to receive it's getting, it's getting right very here. naughty on this podcast yeah oh man Fun. well that makes me think so let's wrap up our pot let's wrap up today's episode but i want to wrap up by kind of saying what's one plant that you're not liking first and then one plant that you're absolutely loving and i'll go first if you want me to okay yeah okay one plant that i'm hating right now is my albo syngonium which is she's dead <gasps> she is dead she's yeah. dead and i just slowly watched her die i was just like yeah it's happening i i just i it was one of those things that i was like i'm kind of over you i don't want to move this giant pot into the shower and water it yeah anyway uh, well so i still have her. mine's doing great and that's that came off yours so yeah. she's she's she's, going she's still strong. kicking she lives somewhere. on she lives on um, to tell the story in one plant that i'm loving right now i'm gonna say a species because it's hoya pandorata i have like pandorata. four or five different forms and i love it Ooh. love it and it grows so well it's like in the family of the polyneura the polyneura complex it kind of mm-hmm. has a similar growth pattern different shape leaf the pandorat leaves is the shape of like a fiddly fig like where it's like a fiddle like it's wide narrow Ooh. wide oh. but the pandorata well, we love her so i love her okay um one plant that i'm hating right now is probably the free um uh orchid that jay brought from the trash did i tell you about this (laughs) yeah Yeah, i saw it on your instagram yeah (laughs) yeah so i gave one away two died and i have one left and i just hate it i don't it's dumb like i don't like orchids i'm not an orchid girl (laughs) It doesn't do anything for me, but it's there. It's surviving. Um, And then one that I absolutely love is probably my um, elbow that I got from Brie. Because it's just beautiful. And I love it. And And it's it's doing doing really well. well. Mm, Good. Yeah, Yeah. it's doing really well. It just put out a new leaf. So. Very exciting. All right, Becca, what about you? Yeah, Bex. I am really hating Oh, okay. I just figured out that my, well, Nora and I were looking around the plant room. I was trying to show her plants to see if she would look at them. And Mm -hmm. I was looking at my philodendron patriciae, the one that I got from the Aquagenera pop-up. And it has spider mites. Oh, no. It's the year of spider mites. I got to be honest. They are everywhere. Yeah. I got them. Mm Mm-hmm. Oof. Yeah. That scares me. I don't know. I probably do, too. I need to check that whole corner now, which I just really don't want to do because current life situations, but I probably yeah. will anyway. There's some plants around it that I suddenly started looking really bad and I was like, Ugh, great. They mm. probably have spider mites too. So it's a video. Uh, it's content. Yeah. Everything is content. I am <laughs> mad at her for that. Although she is very beautiful. I am mad that she has spider mites and I don't think that she had them when I brought them in. So... Mm-hmm. I think that it just happened this in, in my home, which isn't abnormal. Um, okay. And then what I'm really loving, you guys, my philodendron splendid is so beautiful. It just put out a leaf mm. that's like eight or nine inches long. Like it's huge. And that's crazy. I'm just okay. so happy because if it's like, I know. Hey, splendid. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's also one of those philodendron that you can keep organized. You know, we like to have organized plants. What Adam was talking about, how the aeroids yeah. can be really like sporadic. This one yeah. is very easy to keep up a pole because the, the, the limbs are very thin. So you can kind of manipulate and them. And like, a t- yeah. like, not as like, they don't grow far off right. the plant. Yeah. yeah. They're not like rigid. 
Mm -hmm. So that one is just so beautiful. It's a it's a melanochrysum varicosum cross. And like the varicosum is, in my opinion, one of the most beautiful houseplants or just tropical plants ever. I cannot keep them alive. Yeah. So (laughs) this cross makes it possible for me to have like the vibes. And I'm really just so pleased with it. It's so beautiful. Fun. Awesome. Well, audience, thank you for joining us on this first episode of season seven. Um, Yay! Head over to Instagram. Give us a follow over there at Pata Together. Um, and you can follow us also individually. I'm at Not Dude. Nicole is at My Clean Leaves. And Becca is at De La Plants. Mm-hmm. And I honestly don't know how to do our outro anymore. But did that seem fine? That- that, that sounded great. Yeah, uh, leave us okay. a review if you loved this episode. Yeah. Yes, you know you did. And also, if you want to hear um, an extended part of this episode, you can join Patre- Our Patreon. Patreon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Why do I have such a yep. hard time with that word? I can never say it. It's okay. We forgive you. Okay, thanks. <laughs> All okay. right. <laughs> All right. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Gear Patrol calls their new dive watch the best sub $500 dive watch. Full stop. Men's Health rated them as the most stylish solar watch in the game. Who are we talking about? It's movement. They're leveling up your gift giving with the sleekest watches you can buy and the biggest deals of the season. Shop 30 to 50% off Movement's innovative California clean watches, jewelry, and accessories with fast free shipping and returns now at MVMT.com. That's MVMT.com.